All right, good evening, everyone. Um, just noticed a question in the chat, which is timely. Um, yes, the meeting is officially starting now. I was just giving um, a few others some time to straggle in. Um, welcome everyone. My name is Andrea Gillis. I am the interim director of planning and urban design. Thank you for joining us tonight um, for this relatively informal discussion, largely Q and A about forward Dallas and where we're at in the process and some of the significant changes or not so significant changes since the plan, the draft plan has been recommended to city plan commission by the comprehensive land use plan committee. They made their recommendation on January 9th. So what we wanted to take an opportunity to do was sort of give some highlights about what was discussed and recommended at the um, stage of the comprehensive land use plan committee. Um, talk about some of those bigger highlights and then talk to you about some next steps and what you can expect um, in the next steps in the process. So I do want to provide a couple of housekeeping items before we jump in. Um, so we're going to go through the presentation first. I have um, one of our chief planners with me, um, Lawrence Agu, who is going to sort of take over midway through the presentation and go over some of the highlights from the review from the, the committee meetings um, and the draft document. Um, I will take the first part of the presentation, but some of the housekeeping pieces, we're going to go through the entirety of the presentation first, take questions and comments after that. Y'all will be muted until we get to the question period, um, just so we can help with flow and manage any you know, background um, noise that we might, um, might hear um, with people coming and going on the, the call. Um, at that time, there on the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little hand. It's a raise hand option. That's how we'll be calling on people for Q&A at the end of the presentation. You just click on that, raise your hand, we'll keep track. Um, and we'll call on you um, for questions and, and take you off mute. You can also, if you see also on the bottom, on the right hand side of bottom right hand, there's a chat option. You can feel free to add in comments throughout the, you don't have to wait until the very end. You can put in comments and questions um, in the chat and toward the end of it, then we'll start working through some of those questions that are in the chat. I do want to wrap this up out of respect for time. We had this reserved until um, 7 p.m. tonight. I want to make sure that you all get some of your evening back. So we will be ending at 7 p.m. But if there are follow up questions, I want to make sure that we'll put our contact information in the chat. So if anybody wants to follow up with staff after this meeting, we can absolutely do that. There is also a second meeting of this as well um, later on this week. Um, if folks wanted to join that, but it's going to be the same kind of meeting. Um, I also did want to point out that we are recording this meeting so that if anybody wanted to follow up back on that, we will post the recording of the meeting. So with all of that housekeeping information, I will hop into the presentation. Um, again, thank you for joining us. This is the outline. Um, I sort of mentioned that we'll go over some of the major changes, give a project update, and then talk about next steps. Next steps. Next slide, please. Um, but before we even started any of the meat of the document, I did want to go into sort of set a baseline of what Forward Dallas is and what it isn't. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen some of the news articles that have been floating around. Um, there has been a lot of information that has been floated. Um, some of it is not, some of it we need to help update and, and provide some additional information on some of those contents and some of the opinions that were provided in those articles. I wanna make sure that everybody understands the issues and is on the same playing field. Next slide, please. So the big question of why Forward Dallas? Forward Dallas, again, this is an update. Forward Dallas was first established in two, 2006, but Forward Dallas didn't take the plan as far as arriving at the adoption of a land use plan. So we haven't had a citywide land use, future land use plan guiding development decisions throughout the city. Um, we're one of the only major cities in the country and even smaller cities that don't have a citywide land use plan. So what Forward Dallas is talking about today is how we adjust for our growth and our preservation moving forward and to have some more predictable guidance to draw to when we do go through and look at some zoning changes throughout the city. 
um, I just want to, you know, the city is changing. It really is a matter of how we adapt to that change, how we plan for that change. And that is part of what Forward Dallas is, is looking at. Um, and we haven't had, like I said, neighborhoods. I know that a lot of the concern and a lot of the people that are on the meeting tonight are concerned about neighborhoods. Well, we haven't had from a holistic citywide perspective, a lot of very predictable guidance for neighborhoods to utilize when moving forward. And Forward Dallas is the first step in providing that guidance. Again, there are parts of the city that have plans that parts of the city have that guidance. Some of the, the areas that have those plans are also quite old. They're you know, 10, 20 years old. And when you think about where the city was at 20 years ago, we're in a very different spot. Some areas were exactly where we were, but there are a lot of areas that are seeing a lot of change and haven't had that planning done to help move in a forward direction. Um, so that is all part of the discussion through Forward Dallas. Next slide, please. I wanna be very clear that Forward Dallas is a guiding vision document. It is not a zoning document. I've seen a lot of articles that have talked about that Forward Dallas will change your property overnight it is going to de facto rezone your property. Forward Dallas does not rezone properties, period. Forward Dallas is a guiding document that provides guidance for zoning requests, but it does not in and of itself change any zoning at all. It cannot do that and it doesn't do that. An entirely separate process would need to occur after Forward Dallas to make any zoning changes or any code changes. And that would be also be a public process. Next step, please. Next slide, please. This other piece that I've seen a lot, Forward Dallas does not call for the elimin elimination of single family zoning or neighborhoods. It establishes a framework for continued conversation about how to implement the plan, which may include zoning. There are some zoning recommendations in the document, but it does not pre prescribe exactly the how and the where. One of the other things too is, is that, you know, there's, we've heard a lot of discussion about this housing memo that is out that talks about the three and four units, triplexes, quads in our neighborhoods. That is a totally separate piece in this. It came, you know, Forward Dallas had been going on for two years before we received that five signature memo that was authored by Councilman West to explore and have the discussion about how we might think about lot sizes and additional housing types for our neighborhoods in the future. Now, Forward Dallas does recommend that we have to figure out how to accommodate more housing for more people and more housing needs in the coming decades, but it does not say anything about eliminating single family residential neighborhoods. In fact, it acknowledges that we have a lot of single family neighborhoods. We want to preserve and stabilize and, and celebrate those neighborhoods, but we have to think strategically about how to do that. And we have to have conversations. It also talks a lot about how we equitably handle additional housing in our city, that we can't just be thinking neighborhood by neighborhood. That is part of it. But from a Forward Dallas perspective, we have to think about it on a much broader level. Next slide, please. Um, and Forward Dallas, as I sort of mentioned, it does not prescribe one specific answer. It does lay out guidance. It says we have to have further discussion. There are some areas where it does, you know, there are, I know it's been mentioned about accessory dwelling units. Forward Dallas does recommend that accessory dwelling units be la allowed in residential districts throughout the city. The language that it, so here's an example of how much work is still to be done on the plan and how much time is still left. We can have those discussions about that. Forward Dallas puts that out. The Comprehensive Land Use Plan Committee recommended that move forward in the document, in the action plan. But it can be adjusted. It can be written differently. It can be, you know, it, it can be softened and it can also include, I know some of the concerns was that there isn't appropriate criteria for our accessing accessory dwelling units. It can for, go further and make the recommendation that we, before doing anything on that, in that respect, we need to update our criteria for accessory dwelling units. So again, 
it recommends further discussion and it establishes framework for additional discussion. And I cannot emphasize enough. It is not a zoning document. It does not change zoning. It leads to further discussion. It does establish a framework for where we plant some of those discussions, how we look at some of those discussions helps organize those next steps, but it does not dictate exactly how those steps go. Next slide, please. So with that, I'm gonna go into the larger forward Dallas, but I thought it was important to sort of establish some of those you know, what for Dallas is and what it isn't because, and I'm happy to continue that conversation because I think it's really critical. Moving into city plan commission that we establish some of those. And I think that there is still areas where we can massage the plan, but we have to be able to have honest conversations about that. So project update next slide, please. So, where we're at in the process, I mentioned this a few times. The comprehensive land use plan committee has recommended to city plan commission. A draft, an updated draft document. Staff is working right now to incorporate all of the changes that the Comprehensive Land Use Plan Committee has recommended, and we plan to start going to City Plan Commission in February, which will start public hearings. We'll have briefings and public hearings with City Plan Commission. They'll have another opportunity to review the document, recommend changes, um, but that should be starting in February. Um, and the Comprehensive Land Use Plan Committee is a committee of the City Plan Commission. So they do a first really significant scrub of the document of the draft and then before it moves on to City Plan Commission. Next slide, please. And I guess I did from that slide and you don't have to go back, Lawrence, but I did want to point out that this is something I've you know, sort of heard that we need more community engagement. We need to be more. We actually started this document in the fall of 2021. And so there's been a lot of discussion on this document. So since the, the fall of 2021, and I'm going to go over some of those, um, some of that engagement, but leading into, you know, specifically the most recent, the comprehensive land use plan committee, this is all the times that they met to discuss forward Dallas. It has been close to 2 years that this document in different pieces has been with them really thinking about the future land uses, which we're calling place types, how we're defining certain places, which Lawrence will go into in a little bit. We, that, we, we spent a lot of time discussing that and trying to get that in a good position to represent our places in Dallas. Um, but in September, we pulled all of those pieces together and um, prepared a draft, a first draft, full draft document for the comprehensive land use um, committee to start reviewing. So since that time, I think largely we've met twice a month, they meet twice a month to go over that document. And we finally, so that's about two, four, six, about eight meetings that we had with them. Some of them day all meetings going literally line by line to go through this document with staff. They also had public comments as well. And so ultimately on January 9th, they had their final committee and recommended a draft with changes to go forward to city plan commission to start their review. Next slide, please. And I'll just briefly touch on this. So not only has there been community engagement, um, you know, out throughout the city, we've had the comprehensive land use plan committee, but then we also have a technical review committee. So internal um, departments, um, external agencies, have been reviewing the recommendations in this plan, obviously specific to their expertise to make sure that one, what is in the plan can be or can be um, implemented. And then also just making sure that their needs are also served. And I, I also wanna point out at this point that Forward Dallas is also building on several adopted plans or policy documents that the city has approved over the past two years. So part of that is working with those departments to making sure that all of these plans speak to each other and that they're all implementing each other. Next slide, please. And then again, this, you know, the community engagement, as I said, you know, we've had in-person events, we've had um, virtual events, you know, starting, this is as of January, 2024, but we've had, you know, starting in, we had a kickoff in fall of 2021, um, we've had different forms of meetings, small group meetings, large workshops. Um, we've also had an interactive map online where we've gotten thousands of comments from that, you know, 
what people like about the recommendations, what they don't like about certain parts of, you know, the city, what they do like. Um, all of that culminating into, you know, this is where we sort of been all throughout the city, the different types of maps. We've really tried to make sure that we have distributed ourselves throughout the city. Um, largely, it's, you know, proactively looking at areas through the city that we needed to go out to, but also then responding to people who have asked us to come to them. Um, next slide, please. Oh, and that with that, I will actually, well, actually, no, I think we'll go into the next slide. I have a couple more slides and then I'll, I'll pass it off to Lawrence. So this is just sort of the mechanics of the plan. So we'll provide at the end of this presentation, if you haven't seen the full document, a link to where the document is, it's a draft plan. Um, but ultimately the components of the plan are, we have land use themes that came out of community engagement. People talked about their priorities for the city. And those land use themes then were used to develop our sort of play in part our place type descriptions and some of our implementation actions within the document. So these are sort of the four components of the plan. So we have these overarching themes, then we describe different places, future land uses within the city. We've got a map that it's, you know, the color coded map. If you go back to the place type descriptions, that's where you get the meat of what those colors on the map mean. And then we have an implementation plan. We want to make sure that this plan is actionable. Next step, please, or next slide. And so out of all of the discussions that we had within the community, sort of our top two biggest topics of conversation were environmental justice and housing accessibility. So we had to make sure that this plan was responding to those two issues from a future land use plan perspective and then action steps within the implementation plan. There's also um, the themes of economic development and revitalization. There's a lot of conversation about our corridors and how we redevelop our corridors. Transit oriented development, which basically means, you know, either within a quarter mile or a half mile of a transit station or a major transit hub or a lot of transit activity. What kind of development are we looking at there? Um, and then community and urban design. This kind of spread throughout the entire document because really the community and urban design is how you get sort of the, the details of the different types of place. What gives it that feel? Um, and much of it is the urban design or the design of that place. Next slide, please. So with that, I'm gonna pass that off to Lawrence. Lawrence is going to take us through some of the big key issues that the Comprehensive Land Use Plan Committee discussed through their review and some of the changes that resulted from that, from the first draft into the draft that they recommended to CPC. And again, we're gonna focus on these key highlights, but obviously if you were gonna provide a link at the end, if you wanna go through the entirety of the document, um, and if you have any questions, if you do that, and if you have any questions after that, we're, we're happy to set up a time to talk to you about that, but we're only gonna be focusing on the key changes and I'll pass it off to Lawrence. Thank you, Lawrence. All right, thank you, Andrea, and good evening, everybody. So I'll try to make this as brief as possible uh, without going too quickly. Uh, so as Andrea mentioned, the meat of the place type section in the plan document touches on how each part of the city, how it's broken up into different typologies, different, different types uh, that you see in the city. So from a residential community to an open space to um, industrial hub, those types of places are described uh, throughout the plan document and our comprehensive land use plan committee, they provided feedback to refine uh, the definitions, how we are de describing the form and how they should be implemented uh, in, in the plan document. Uh, what I'm showing on the map or on the screen uh, is gonna highlight two major place types uh, that we refined and tweaked and added and modified through the discussions in the, I guess the past year actually. And from that discussion, hopefully provide an update to, uh, to those joining this call in terms of what those updates look like, what you all should be focused on um, as you review the document yourselves and provide staff with any feedback that you have moving forward. So firstly, we wanna touch on the community residential. Uh, so last year, this was actually two uh, place types. Uh, it was called the traditional residential and the blended residential. Uh, the feedback that we got from the community, uh, the club and uh, other stakeholders were that um, on the map, 
uh, those two place types, although they had the same land uses and descriptions related to land use, um, they seem to um, prioritize certain parts of the community in terms of how um, density, how form should be looked at. And a lot of uh, conversation about equitable development, equitable land use uh, progress through the city uh, focus on those two land uses and the, the comments that we had from, from the club and a lot of community members was to look at that place type uh, pretty in detail, provide some options in terms of which way to go and which way we went was actually developing uh, a new place type uh, called the community residential place type, uh, which incorporated uh, the form of both those legacy traditional uh, residential place type and the blended residential place type into one place type. Uh, so in the plan document that we have drafted now, uh, the particular uh, land uses that we had in those two are embodied in this place type. And what it does, it does two things. It, it identifies that all residential communities, single family residential, single family residential communities, um, there is no preference in terms of one type or the other, and they are all under um, one category in, on the place type map. Uh, which provides, uh, at least through the feedback that we've gotten, um, more of an equitable approach of how we look at these communities uh, in the city. Uh, so those that when you delve into the document, um, it's going to show two types of form uh, or how uh, neighborhoods or neighborhoods are, are developed in this particular place type, more the, the curvilinear, sometimes more suburban type of layout and more the, the older gridded form. Uh, as we mentioned before, the land uses in this place type in both contexts are the, exactly the same. Uh, what we wanted to dif differentiate was that these forms look different depending on where you are. So we, what we've done is combine that into, into one place type uh, and the particular spread or the, the plan document pages uh, talks about how that would be applied depending on where you are in the city. So we won't delve into that uh, for this particular discussion, but just wanted to show you all an update of how we went from the, the previous place types that were discussed and the concerns that the community and the club brought to us and how staff um, updated and tweaked that the document spread to reflect what we were hearing. Uh, secondly, the, the most uh, uh, feedback that we got related to the place types were focused on our industrial place types. Uh, so on the screen, we're going to go through three uh, industrial place types. Uh, I want to touch on the, the flex commercial. So um, the flex commercial, actually going to touch on all three, uh, logistics hub and the industrial hub represent the three industrial place types that exist in the city. Uh, through discussions with our comprehensive land use plan committee, they mentioned that we should be looking at uh, an industrial uh, logistic park uh, place type that focuses on larger uh, swaths of development related to, you know, truck traffic and areas of land where warehouses and the like are developed. Uh, prior to that, that particular um, land use was partially within the industrial hub and partially within our flex commercial place type. Uh, so within creating this particular place type, we were able to focus um, our intent on the flex commercial being that place type that's signaling that transition away from uh, either harsh um, adjacencies to residential communities and also to um, all the other effects of warehousing and the, all those industries that are are part of that. So in the city, um, we do know that there are certain currently uh, locations where commercial warehouses are abutting residential communities and being able to be very specific as to what this place type does, the flex commercial, uh, versus the logistics um, uh, place type versus the industrial hub. Uh, that was a huge discussion point that we had with CLUP just to be able to easily identify the purpose of each place type and their uh, adjacencies to other land uses in the city. So the flex commercial is the one that's going to be closest to uh, helping transition away from those noxious uh, land use adjacencies is residential. Industrial uh, park logistics hub. Uh, focuses on the larger, um, more logistics uh, uses that you see in the city with larger trucks, larger truck traffic. Uh, that's also been specifically identified in the city. 
And then we have the industrial hub, uh, which focuses on harsher manufacturing uh, uses. And those have been updated in terms of where, they're, where they are in the city. Uh, those three place types, uh, as we then take a step back and look at where they're located in the city, uh, the, now we're showing the place type map that's been also published um, from December uh, 2023. And you start to see that from the dark industrial hub, there are very specific locations in the city um, on the periphery of the city, also abutting other neighboring cities where they have their manufacturing or industrial hub uh, locations. And then as you go into the city, as you notice that heavy industrial use is no longer in the core of the city. Uh, beforehand, uh, those that were with us uh, from three years ago, uh, as we looked at the 2020 2006 place site map, or I guess vision illustration, that land use was kind of peripherated within uh, city limits. And we were very uh, specific to make sure that that wasn't the case moving forward with this particular update. So as we talk through uh, these updates with the next, um, uh, the, the future bodies that we're gonna be going before, uh, that's also gonna be uh, open for discussion with the community and you all that's on the call to either refine and tweak this, this further uh, although this is draft number four, we'll probably have three more drafts uh, as we massage and tweak this map. Uh, so next steps, just to make sure we get uh, enough time for discussions. So as Andrew mentioned, you know we've gone through this since 2021. Um, we're going to be continuing these discussions, uh, roundtable discussions uh, today and Friday. And as needed from the public, uh, if more discussions are needed, uh, we'll avail ourselves for that and for your community to just answer any questions and clarify any uh, either misconceptions or any issues that you might have with the plan. Um, we're going to be working staff with a consultant to help develop and refine our implementation section of the plan. That's going to be what CPC and council are looking heavily on is how are we Im implementing this document and moving that forward. Uh, also going to be moving this to CPC, as Adrian mentioned, and public hearings, public briefings, are going to be uh, available for all community members to also provide their input as well. And then the hope is by uh, summer of 2024 uh, that we're able to get this before council and for them to review the document um, as well. Uh, so we want you all to just continue to stay connected with us uh, through our website. Uh, you can also sign up to be notified by email and I think by text. Our interactive map is also live so you can see this map you zoom into wherever you live just kind of understand what's happening uh, you're open to uh, invite staff to either come to you or you come to us to have a conversation about the plan document and the, and the current draft and like i mentioned before with cpc uh, there will be public hearings and um, briefings that all public uh, were welcome to come and speak and provide your input uh, for our team and then with that that is all I have. Hopefully we have enough time for the, yeah, 30 minutes. Uh, this would be our time for Q&A. Uh, so with q and I'm going to let uh, our engagement manager, Shalonda Mangrua johnson uh, just help facilitate uh, who's online and questions that come through. And Andrew and myself and other staff will uh, be here to answer those. Okay, good evening. So it looks like um, Ryan Moore, um, has his hand up, Ryan, I'll unmute you. All right, can you hear me? Yes, you can. Um, so I have, I have a two part question. The first is the interplay. I know you all done a really good job of, of distinguishing between this being more visionary than zoning. But in the municipal or like local government code, it says that new zoning regulations are to be adopted in accordance to the comprehensive land use plan. So the first half of the question is kind of, can you be a little bit more specific of how instructive this is supposed to be? I know you, I know you said guidance, but if you bring something to the CPC, are they going to be looking first at the comprehensive land use plan and then either limiting or boxing you into certain options? How, how does that interplay work? Sure, um, I can take that question a little bit since I have done a lot of consistency reviews um, throughout my 20 years of planning. Um, it is, yeah, sorry, could we, 
getting background feedback. Um, so again, you're right. It's a guiding document. Um, it does not specifically box you in. Yes, when a when it say a zoning application comes in or a code amendment or a, you know, some sort of change from a zoning perspective or code change comes in. We're going to look at the comprehensive plan. What does the comprehensive plan say? What does it recommend? And is whatever recommendation, is it consistent with or in accordance with the proposal? That is one piece of it. It is not the sole thing that is taken into consideration, but it establishes one of the starting points for the discussion. Now, this is where I urge people to really think about how how the document reads, right? So, you know, we've heard that Forward Dallas is going to change, you know, allow three plexes and four plexes throughout residential neighborhoods. That's not what the document says. If we wanted to make that recommendation, a very specific recommendation, the plan could, it would say, recommend changes to a zoning that allows three and four plexes in all residential neighborhoods. And then part leading off of that, after Forward Dallas gets adopted, staff would go out and start the process of those separate discussions that would talk about exactly how that would be done. Forward Dallas doesn't go into those specifics. It talks about, we have to have further discussion. We have to consider about, uh, we have to consider allowing additional housing types in our neighborhoods. It talks about some of the locations where our starting point would be to look at that. You know, is there a transit station in the area? Are there activity centers? Um, you know, maybe looking at corridor areas. All of those things still need to be explored. It doesn't give the exact predictable layout of where, what direction we need to go so that there is that flexibility because we know that those decisions haven't yet been made of the how. So it gives enough flexibility to still have that discussion to work it out, but it guides us in the direction that we need to go. Whereas right now we don't have any of that guidance. We don't have any of that direction. It's kind of every time something comes in, we start from scratch. And so this is giving us some more parameters. Okay, thank you. Next we have Ann Backley. I'll um, unmute you. Well, sorry, beforehand, I think just to, I think Ryan, did you have a, I know you had a two, two parter. I just want to make sure you got that through. I do, but why don't we just go around and I'll try and tag in at the end. So, okay. No problem. Ask. I believe Ms. Bagley. We're working through trying to unmute. Shalanda, are you able are you able to unmute Ms. Bagley? Oh, there okay. we go. There. Oh, well, thank you for having this meeting tonight. It's really to see a bunch of very good work. And I think I speak from experience on this. I came in to plan commission at the end of the 2006 plan, and I work in planning. Um, I went to a very early meeting and uh, noticed that uh, a green belt was in the wrong place. I pointed it out, I marked it on the map, and it's still wrong on the map. Uh, and I wanna know how to get your attention to correct it because you're showing a green belt down a railroad track instead of on city property and it doesn't connect correctly from the new loop trail to St. Francis Park. And I'd like to know how to help you with that because it needs to be correct. Yeah, I can speak to that briefly. Um, so again, apologies for any any comments that you might have sent that uh, either one clearly identified as being updated. We'll, we'll work with you to, to, to review that. Uh, so re regarding our regional open space, play style specifically, uh, we've working with our consultants actually think through the area kind of threshold that that needs to be identified. So there are some areas that exist in the city um, that shouldn't be uh, 
categorized as regional open space is because it's too small uh, in some areas that uh, don't follow that script. So we're actually working with our consultant to make sure that we are consistently applying that throughout the city. Uh, so there might be some parts of the city that has that and some that don't. Um, that's going to be our focus uh, as the next few updates is to make sure that we are being clear as to how and what area uh, designation we're using uh, for that analysis. So as we look at that area that you identified through your comments, uh, we can kind of get your contact and talk through those specific locations and also talk through the criteria that's being used uh, to identify that. Okay, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, also, I live in Far East Dallas within the Ferguson Road Initiative, and there's going to uh, Ms. Martin, who's the director of that, has already posted on uh, the chat uh, for some information she's looking for. So thank you very much and a good job. No, thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we have um, Evelyn Mayo. I'll um, request for the unmute, and then you could just unmute yourself. Good evening. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes we can. Oh, yep. great. Thank you all so much for having this meeting, and thank you for all your hard work. You're almost there. Um, really appreciate all the changes that have been made with regards to environmental justice. I know we probably sound like we're beating a dead horse, but it's just the concern with the lack of um, definition around what small warehouse means. That is still a holdout on the commercial flex place type um, as a place type, I guess. But I think more importantly, when Lawrence, you came to Joppy and hosted the meeting, you got a lot of great feedback about different commercial uses that are actually beyond the scope of the commercial flex place type. And so it's, I guess, it's less about maybe the industrial uh, land use still within the commercial flex place type and more about the designation adjacent to the Joppy community does not seem reflective of what has been communicated. And so um, I know other residents have shared correspondence um, with you all. And so is there are you all able to adjust the placement of these place types at this time? Is that something the plan commission will be able to do? Or are you still accepting comments on specific land uses within those place types? Yeah, so I can touch on that and my team can jump into. So kind of the two parter one, as we're looking at that particular place type, you know, as we are going to each community and uh, kind of trying to incorporate what they're telling us, uh, it's important that we, taking a step back and seeing how that place type affects kind of the larger spectrum um, of the city of Dallas. Uh, like I, I tell, tell us at every meeting, every club meeting, the Joppy area, that's the most difficult area in the city. And through Florida Dallas, it's gonna be hard to kind of use just that broad brush um, place type to get at exactly every uh, comment that we've heard. Uh, but with that though, the, the, the place types, and the, the map that's still being developed and we're still getting comments and we're still hopefully massaging those two documents. Uh, so it's a draft and we know that some, some places need to be massaged and tweaked uh, and we definitely acknowledge that. Uh, we do know also too that you know, post for Dallas, uh, that area is likely gonna be an area to kind of go through more in investigation from a land use perspective that can go parcel by parcel and land use by land use identifying uh, what should be there. So all of the place types identify uh, uh, a suite of different land uses. I think uh, Joppy is needed to have a more specific uh, analysis and, 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 and plan investigation to go at play, uh, parcel by parcel to identify what those land uses should be, um, which won't be able to be completed through the four Dallas scope of what we're doing. So it's kind of two pro approaches, definitely still um, I hear exactly what you're saying, but I think there's gonna be more detail needed uh, for the Joppy community. Well, and following up on that, I just, it, so yes, there is time to do, to make changes still on the map. There mm -hmm. is, um, you know, we're still in that process. We can still make adjustments. I know exactly the, the area that you're calling out and, you know, we battle with the, you know, you've got a massive UP rail line and, and switch station right there. And how are we handling that um, from the realities of, potentially walkable 
commercial, right? And how do we find a balance there? Um, so we can certainly, we are going to, based on comments from the last meeting at club, we will take further look at the map, again, going into CPC and have additional conversations on that and see if there is some adjusting there that can happen. Um, it can happen at the staff level. What we will do, what we will make sure to do when, so how the process will work. Anything now, now that the document's going to city plan commission, any changes like that, if they're more than just sort of, you know, um, corrections or whatever it might be, but if there's substantial changes, we will make sure to bring those to CPC to have that discussion publicly so that it's open. Um, and make sure that they're aware if we, we're not just going to go make any changes at this point, it's going to be a public discussion about any changes um, to make sure that that happens. So, but, and we, all of those comments, we're still taking back to, to continue the analysis on the map. So that will be a piece of it. Um, I did want to say that leading on this conversation, and sorry, just to jump in on if anyone has their hand, I'm looking at the, the chat and there are quite a few comments about how forward Dallas won't help with environmental justice issues in the South and West. in and of itself, it won't. You're absolutely right. It is one piece of the puzzle. So what we're hoping is that what forward Dallas will do will provide the guidance to certain areas that say these areas need to transition away from X. What it's going to take then is a follow-up rezoning effort to yeah, we've got a lot of zoning in the South that has never been, you know, or a lot of property in the South that has never been rezoned given changing conditions. We need to address that. We need to go take a look at that. There may be, need to be neighborhood plans that follow up with that. But that again, too, doesn't fully solve the issue, right? Because you have non-conforming uses. And so that's a whole other step. So there are many layers in all of this but we have to make sure that at least we have the land use guidance in place as well. We have that piece of the puzzle because we don't have it and it makes it more difficult to do the other things that need to happen as well. So in and of itself, you're right. It doesn't, it, it doesn't solve the issue, but it is part of the, the package of things that need to happen to start making that change. Shalanda, do we have any other hands up? Yes, Vicki is the next person. I'll unmute you, Vicki. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for this call. I appreciate it. My name is Vicki Martin. I'm the executive director for the Ferguson Road Initiative. I put my comment and question in the chat, and I see that that Patrick responded, but I, that's exactly um, uh, what I wanted to address. And that is the uh, area that is currently zoned near Lakeland and Ferguson intersection in Far East Dallas. It's currently uh, been given a place type of neighborhood mixed um, use. And um, I would really like for uh, the forward plan folks to consider uh, uh, that area to be a uh, community, a community, um, hold on, residential, I'm sorry. There is, and I wanna know how we can, how we can address that. So I will say that there is, um... So there's another question and, and welcome Councilwoman Mendelson. Um, thank you for being on the call and thank you for joining us tonight. And I did see your, your comment in. So about <clears throat> the single family place type um, that's come up a lot. That is not a recommendation. So from a place type, adding changing place types at this point, that is where we're now at the city plan commission stage, right? Requests can now be made at the public hearings as part of Forward Dallas through the City Plan Commission. So you can send in emails, you can send them to staff, we will forward them on. You can come in, you can sign up to speak at City Plan Commission meetings. What we'll be doing is we'll be updating our website. We're gonna to put together, so this Thursday, 
at CPC will be doing a very brief update to CPC that just talks about the timeline and when we could potentially get the first draft to them to start reviewing. That will include, we will start then doing public hearings at CPC. So you can sign up to speak, you can send in written comments. Um, if you want a different place type, you can send that in to directly to CPC or you can send it into staff and we can forward it to them. Staff will do the analysis on it as well. But those are part of the discussions. There's still time for making adjustments at CPC. That doesn't mean that they will recommend the change, but the discussion is still up for grabs and it's still part of something that can occur through the CPC process. This plan is a moving target until it gets adopted by city council. So there's still time for change and there's still public input to be had. Can I ask a question? Sure. Can you, okay. Um, I was, uh, took, uh, I took part in one of the workshops that, that was at White Rock Hills, um, library. And I, I know that it was not recommended by the community to be, um, um, uh, to be a, um, oh, no, was it? Shoot. I keep having to keep neighborhood mixed view. Yes. Thank you. And, and so I want to make sure I understand. I've got to, who do I make the request to with the forward Dallas people? Cause I've tried and I don't get any response. So what do I do? So we'll put our contact information in the chat. Um, and you can send it to 1 of us. Okay. Now. I want to emphasize that. Just because a change hasn't been made on the map doesn't mean we didn't take it into consideration. There are many, many things and many perspectives that we have to take into consideration. So there could have been 1 meeting where 10 people said, we don't want this. We could have looked at our interactive map and there were 10 comments that said something different. We could have gone to another citywide meeting and they said, no, we want this. Then we could have looked at planning best practices and made a recommendation based on that. Then we could have looked at adopted city plans for different areas and maybe it said something different. So what we're trying to do at this point is balance all of that into a recommendation as it is right now. So that being said, again, doesn't mean we can't take further look at it and make some adjustments. But I just want, we hear a lot that, you know, we said at this meeting that we didn't want this and then therefore you didn't listen to us. I do want to emphasize that it's not that we didn't listen. It's just there, there's a lot of material and information that we're balancing. But all of that to say, again, I would send it to us send it to, and we will respond back to you with a response of, we're recommending the change, you're right, we're recommending the change, or this is the reason why we're going to continue forward with this recommendation, but we will talk to CPC about the fact that there is a request for some changes. Just so you know that that's kind of the process that plays out. Thank you. Do we have anyone? We have a few more speakers and we have about eight minutes. So I just wanted to do a, um, a time check, but we have uh, about five more um, questions. And next up, uh, Ryan Moore, Ryan Al, um, send a request to unmute you. All right, thank you. Um, so while I appreciate you guys doing bending over backwards to, you know, until you're blue in the face that this is guidance, this is an instructive, it's not a limit. It's clear that everyone sees each place type as a limit to a certain extent. And my concern is from a perspective of trying to incentivize development, trying to build communities into what the vision is. A lot of people want to tamp down their place type, right? They want to go from neighborhood mixed use to city urban residential or something like that. But when you have something really urban, so I'm a in district 13 um the vickery area that's already incredibly dense and uh, a lot of different housing types you put that in city urban residential if someone was coming in wanting to exceed 
what is already on the ground, are they not going to be disincentivized thinking that they're going to get a fight with the CPC, not being able to build up or increase capacity. And on, on the same token, on the Northwest side, west of 35, why are we making uh, riverfront, greenfront property industrial hubs? If this is visionary, I understand it's industrial right now, and we wouldn't want to make them non-conforming and kick them out by any means. But if a developer comes in, wants to build multi-family housing on a beautiful lakeside or riverside, they're not going to do that if they're facing a place type that doesn't have any housing whatsoever is even a secondary uh, focus. Uh, so if this is a visionary document, not necessarily what the land use is as of right now, but rather what we want to grow into, why are we putting ourselves in a hole in terms of, you know, kind of defining it as what it is instead of what it could be. So I'll take, I can start on that one. Um, I will say, so it is a visionary document, but also trying to be based in reality, right? So there is a, there is a lot of land um, along the Trinity that has been shifted from previously industrial land use into a more mixed type of land use. Not every single portion of it. And what we did is what we looked down at, what we looked at is the realities of, um, can someone who's not muted mute? I think there's a lot of background that I'm here. Thank you. Um, what we've, it, it, yes, it is aspirational of this future, but there are some very serious realities to some of the areas of existing land use, right? And we don't necessarily want to perpetuate environmental justice issues on areas that potentially there is land that may be environmentally contaminated. We don't want to say, go and put housing here. So there are areas where we've also looked at transitioning away. I will also say that Forward Dallas, many land use plans, like citywide comprehensive land use plans are 15, 20 year documents. Because the city of Dallas does not have a future land use plan and it has never had a future land use plan, I would say that the life of this document is probably 10 years with a look at it in five and we need to make adjustments. So thinking about realistically change areas in a five to 10 year perspective. And then if those areas start to show movement, that follow up forward Dallas can absolutely capture that and be much more aspirational in some of those areas. I will say though, that there are significant swaths of the Trinity that this plan shifts away from any type of industrial development or the proposal for any type of industrial development. So we've tried to find some balancing there um, between the aspirational and what's existing on the ground and what we may be dealing with for the next five to 10 years. I hope that helps. Okay, next and, we have- uh, uh, Just on that, I would just ask, please, on the things that you've said are uh, local examples of certain things. You, you mentioned Koreatown as a uh, community mixed use, but you've already cut it up and made it flex commercial and regional mixed use. So, you know, dig deep into the things that you use as examples and actually attribute those things to those areas. And I think that would be- Thank you. Thank you. Rachel, on to you, I had another question. Was there another? Adam Lamont, you're up next. Hello. Um, I mean, first, I'll say that uh, I am in favor of the uh, ADUs uh, in single family neighborhoods. I know many on this call won't love that. Um, but question is really about uh, vacant land. I know in the uh, draft plan, it has like one stat about the amount of vacant land in Dallas, I think, but it says like it's within uh, like transit nodes. So I'm curious if that's the total amount of like developable vacant land in Dallas um, and just like sort of how the plan um, wants to deal with vacant land generally. Yeah, I can speak to that. Um, so in addition to this draft document, we actually have other um, accompanying documents uh, that are supporting this one. Uh, one of those being our existing conditions report. Uh, and there's an analysis there that details how much vacant land we have in the city. Uh, so a lot of the documentation language that you have in this draft plan refers to that analysis. Um, if we were to combine everything into one document, it'd be like a 500 page document. Nobody wants that. 
so we have referenced that analysis that we've done um, prior to developing this draft, and we can clarify that in uh, those particular locations in this draft uh, to provide that clarity as to uh, how much uh, vacant land opportunities we have and what that's what could, what the place types could could uh, kind of morph to depending on where it is in the city. Okay, next we have um, Matthew Bach. I will unmute you and then after that, we have 2 more questions. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate the time and detail you put into this plan. My great concern is that. Uh, it's a bit shocking that you've come this far and there is not a single family uh, neighborhood place type for established neighborhoods. Um, it, it's hard for me to believe that you have, uh, in terms of trying to balance uh, needs and desires, that this was something that was uh, really uh, discussed on both sides. I mean, I'm quite active in the community in far north Dallas, and there's a great deal of concern, and I've frankly not heard anyone come forward saying they want more density. Uh, and specifically, um, concerns about the lot size maybe being changed, or again, ADUs by right. Um, this is not at all something I've heard people come forward in support of, and so it, it's hard for me to believe where this came from. But my point today is just simply to say I I would a ask you to go back and revisit this and establish a place type that honors single family only use for established neighborhoods. Thank you. And I appreciate, I, I do appreciate that comment. I, I will say, and I, I think this is where, you know, we really need to scrub through the community residential place type and the description of it, because it does, it, it starts out by stating, acknowledging that this place type is a predominantly single family residential place type and that it will continue to be a predominantly single family residential place type. I think we do have that place type. I understand the concerns that people want one single place type just for single family residential. In this plan, the forward Dallas plan, there is no place type that has just one land use. It is a it, it discusses a place, what makes up a place. And we really are hard pressed. We have actually had people driving through. And I know, depending on the scale, we could say yes, that they exist. But there really are a lot of neighborhoods in Dallas that already have, even the ones you don't think that have it, they have different housing types. And maybe it's just duplex. Maybe it is the random granny flat. But it's it's hard to find a neighborhood this day and age, given how people live and how they're going to continue to live in the decades to come, where it is just solely a single family home in a large swath of area. And I know they're out there. I know that I'm not, but it's just, again, that community residential place type really is, it acknowledges that we do have predominantly single family residential neighborhoods and we're, we're acknowledging that and they will continue to be. But where within those neighborhoods, maybe can we find some space for some additional housing types that are sensitive to the context of those areas? And again, we can have, you know, there will be people that will come to CPC and that's, this is part of the process and request a entirely single family residential place type. And if the CPC wants to consider that and move that forward to city council, they can certainly do that. That is, that's part of the public process. It's just at the comprehensive land use plan committee stage, they did not make that recommendation. And Shalani, you said there were two more questions. Yes, next we have Harry Swanson. Uh, yes, I, I, the Dallas plan, we're trying to co create community, I think. And I see, you know, everybody, I understand why everybody's going you know, for sing their particular interest, that's human nature. 
But what's happening overall in the community is we're building all these multifamily residential areas and they're renters. We're creating a society in Dallas. Now even some of the uh, residential houses builders are, are building to rent. And if all we have is renters, we've got to get more people with equity. Does the plan address cooperatives, community land trusts, mutual housing associations, what's done in other cities where renters own a part of the building or they own part of something so they can get some equity? Because once somebody gets equity, we build community. Mm -hmm. And we're getting all these multi-family houses where the rents keep going up and up for these people in all districts of the city, and it's not building community. So do you address that in the plan? Yeah, I can speak to, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Lawrence, go ahead. I was gonna say all those uh, kind of models and types you just mentioned, those are actually listed in our implementation section, co-ops, et cetera. Uh, because yes, 100%, we see exactly what you're seeing too, is that uh, we need to provide more opportunities uh, for people to be able to build wealth and live in the city of Dallas. Uh, so either if it's by owning a home or renting a home, those prices are skyrocketing. So I think providing as much options as we can uh, to live in the city of Dallas is uh, what we're looking to do through what we we're, we're, we're proposing to implement uh, in this plan. Where is it in the plan again? I'm sorry. Our implementation section, so there should okay. be a table of kind of action items, um, also followed by lead agencies that will be helping move that forward. So, so it isn't a place type. No, it's within our implementation section of the plan document. Because it seems like place types gets the most action. You know, because you're talking everything is place types. Everybody's talking place types. If it's not a place type, you know, that we're going to have that, I don't understand you're going to implement it, but if it's not a place type, because your whole document, it's on place types, am I correct? So that's what it does. So the place type lays the foundation for mm -hmm. those types of uses, the, that type of housing. It says, yes, we could do those in this place type. Then the implementation section is what gets into the specific action items to okay. get to that point. Okay. So it lays the foundation to allow it, place type. Then the action step, the action matrix gives you those details about how to go about it. Okay. Thank you. And we have our last question from Billy Lane. So just for my own education, could you just kind of uh, articulate what were the driving priorities uh, that you kind of used? I mean, was it strictly, you know, trying to balance needs and wants? Was it development? Was it optimization, maximization? Did we, what were some of the driving priorities? All of those were really good. All of those were part of it, right? Um, it was also longstanding issues that we heard that hadn't been addressed for decades, so for example, environmental justice, um, that we really wanted an eye on that in this plan and put it front and center um, because those are sort of issues that, you know, we've been hearing about since a long time ago. Um, then obviously we've got, a, you know, a lot of changing conditions in the city and how we address that. We have changing, you know, how are we handling our transportation networks? So thinking about strategically where we're placing some, you know, thinking about infrastructure, that ha was a big part of the conversation in South Dallas, right? It's, you know, we can't just willy-nilly recommend development because maybe there isn't the infrastructure there. And so how do we handle that? If we're, if we're recommending X, we have to make sure that we're also involving the departments in the city from a perspective of infrastructure allotment. Um, you know, national best practices, you know, Dallas is unique. Dallas is special, but Dallas is also a major city and a lot of major cities throughout the country are dealing with a lot of these issues. Some of them have been talking about them for years and, and we can take pieces of that to learn from. By no means are we copying anything, but there are lessons to be learned from what other cities have had to go through um, to get to, a, you know, get to the next stage. 
Um, and then also just really being cognizant of some of the issues going on on the ground and what we've heard about, you know, obviously things have been really market changes, for example. Obviously, the housing market is a huge issue that maybe necessarily 10 years ago, we weren't thinking about it in the same way. Um, we've got to think about our office development where we're putting that. We've got to think about retail. All of those market conditions are changing. So it's really, you know, once you start thinking about it, it's like it, it prongs and, you know, and then you know, displacement. What do we do? We recommend all of this change and all of these new things. We have to think about, you know, what that impact, what that potentially could be impact on displacement. Housing displacement, small business displacement, all of those issues play into this, into the factors. And so trying to really balance all of that to come together into, um, you know, the draft and what you see today. Thank you. Welcome. Um, it looks like we're at about 7.09. Um, I did want to, I want to make sure to respect everyone's time. I know we still have some comments in the chat. Um, we will try, we will, we should have everybody's email, right, Shalanda? So if we, there are some specific issues that, um, you know, we can follow up with you on, we will follow up through email. Please also, I put my email in the chat staff, if you could also do that, if you haven't as well. Um, please also follow up with us. Um, send us an email. We are happy to have conversations um, and following up conversations and talk more in detail about the process and what to expect and when to expect it. Um, and how to cont continue providing us input. Um, we are very open to that. And, um, you know, we do thank you very much for your time tonight. And, um, you know, for those of you who have been involved, you know, since the beginning in this process, or even those who just follow, you know, latched onto this two days ago. So we appreciate that. And there's still a lot of process left. So with that, I want to thank you all and wish you all a good night. Thank you.